and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom and today we're going to talk about dry fire or snapping in. Now what is dry fire or dry practice? Well it's quite simply shooting your gun without ammunition or learning to manipulate the firearm without live ammo. Now I learned how to do this many many moons ago when I was a young private uh, on Paris Island, we went to the rifle range and we actually spent an entire week what they called grass week, and that is snapping in. And some people have said, well, they just do that to save ammo because they don't have enough ammunition to feed you, or they do that just as a time killer. Well, actually, both of those are incorrect. Yes, it does save them money, and yes, it gives you something to do, but the, really the whole point is, is if, you, if you're watching the video, um, you can see I've got a training pistol in my hand right here. Uh, if you're just listening on the podcast, imagine Paul with a training pistol in his hand. Okay, a, a firearm, whether it's a handgun or a rifle or even a shotgun, is simply a mechanical tool. It has a whole bunch of moving parts, and you need to learn to master that tool. You need to learn to make it work and make it work correctly. You don't need live ammunition to figure out how to work the trigger, to rack the slide, to work the bolt, whatever you've got going on that piece of machinery, you don't need live ammunition to do that. You can do it without live ammunition. Now, once you've mastered that, once you've learned how to make the machine run, you add live ammunition and that completes the equation. And a lot of it, there's trainers today that, that don't do dry fire and they don't like dry fire because they say it teaches people bad habits. They just snap the trigger or they jerk the gun or what have you. And that can be true. And I'll tell you exactly why that is. Because your shooters don't have any freaking mental discipline in their bodies. And what they do is they pick up their guns and they just go click, 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 click. And all they're doing is snapping the trigger. Okay, I've got that. But that's not the fault of the method. Okay, the method is not at fault or the dry fire technique is not flawed because your student doesn't have the mental discipline to do it correctly. So keep that in mind before you knock off a, a method of training because it doesn't work and it teaches my shooters bad habits, you might want to consider the fact that the reason it doesn't work is because your shooters are a bunch of lazy slugs. That could be the problem. Now. Once you learn how to dry fire, how to snap in, how to dry practice with your gun, what you need to do is you need to consider that you need to operate the firearm, you need to do it exactly as if it was going to go bang, exactly if you were trying to launch a bullet into the bullseye of your target. If you can do that, if you can discipline yourself enough to manipulate the gun without actually having it jump all around, then you can get a lot from dry practice. Uh, the other problem we have with dry practice or dry fire is a lot of people, students and instructors alike, have this misconception that dry fire is for beginners. You know, one, once a, a shooter has demonstrated that they can safely handle a firearm without shooting themselves or someone else, okay, then we don't need to dry fire anymore. They think, well, well dry fire you do first, and then once you know that they're not going to kill themselves, you give them ammo and you drive on and you don't do it anymore. That's exactly the opposite of correct. Okay, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but that's the opposite of correct. Dry fire is actually for professionals. If you talk to people who make their living shooting guns, make their living with a firearm in their hands, whether they're special forces operators, whether they're race car drivers like Todd Jarrett or Max Michelle, some of the people that actually make a living shooting a gun. You talk to those guys and they'll tell you, I talked to both Max and Todd Jarrett and asked them about dry fire and, and both of them told me when they decided, hey, I'm going to dedicate myself to being a professional shooter. This is how I'm going to make my living and feed my kids. This is how I'm going to do it. They started a regimen of one to two, sometimes three hours a day, five to six days a week of dry fire practice. Not for the first six months, but for the first five years, six years, seven years, ten years. Todd Jarrett told me that he was doing two hours a day, five days a week, for ten years when he started becoming a professional shooter. Okay, so if the professionals think it's a good technique, then all of you beginners 
might want to consider this probably a good technique as well because what are you doing you're learning to master the machine and once you press the trigger the sear releases and smacks the primer everything else is on autopilot it's up to you to do everything right up to that point in time yes i understand that dry fire doesn't teach you recoil management and so forth but the fact of the matter is if you have a solid foundation once you get that ammunition you can go ahead and drive on and reach the next level also keep in mind you can't always go to the live fire range now some of us live in areas where we can walk out our back door and shoot every single day if we want to those people are few and far between most of us actually have to get into a car drive to a range you know block out that time to do the live fire and the fact of the matter is not everybody here is a paid shooter so, yeah, some people have to do other things and even old paul markle who does student of the gun I can't get to the range every single day because most of the time I'm at the computer typing and coming up with thoughts and ideas, believe it or not. So dry practice is an excellent way to maintain your skill because shooting is what? It is a perishable skill. If you don't practice it, you will lose it. All right. So dry practice, it's not just for pros, it's for beginners. Now, if you can't get enough student of the gun, what are you going to do? You're going to go to your little computer, your little iPad, your little mobile device. You're going to type in studentofthegun.com. You're going to check out our shows, our merchandise, our sponsors, all that good stuff. So, studentofthegun.com, go there now.